Laser beams, man. Who would have thought that a couple years ago, we'd have a laser machine here at the lighter side of RC to do some fun stuff with. We've got the Creality Falcon 2 uh, engraver slash cutter machine, and we're gonna unbox this machine and try out some testing to see how this is gonna help us in what we do here at the lighter side of RC. So let's dive into what's in these boxes. Let's unbox this thing and see what it looks like. Now it's a hefty feeling machine. It's uh, I believe all aluminum. Okay, so this is what came in my box here. Uh, if you're ordering one of these, uh, you may get different items. So I ordered the entire package or they shipped the entire package. That includes the uh, like water bottle unit and stuff like that. So of course the hood as well too. So we've got the unit here, very, very nice. This is all uh, purpose aluminum construction, very well built. That is, uh, that looks great. Very impressed with this so far. This hose coming off here is the air assist and that's a pretty slick uh, item on this printer that will cover, but there's the air assist unit right there. Uh, plugs in to the machine. We've got a built-in line and everything. This is the uh, unit so we can engrave um, cylindrical items. We've got different legs here as well. Power supply, the actual laser unit itself. Now this unit is a four laser unit, you can see there, and it totals 22 watts. So lots of power in this unit, which is gonna be pretty cool for cutting different materials. We've got a pair of fancy shades, some tools, power cable. We've got some demo material here. There's some various plywood, uh, USB cable, thickness gauge, operation guide, and some sample materials, including a hunk of stainless or aluminum. That's pretty cool. And then we've got uh, the base here, which is like the protector sheet. And I'm assuming this piece of metal goes underneath the protector sheet. Assembly of the unit was very simple. The instructions are very straightforward and easy to follow. The first set of feet are screwed into the bottom. We've put the uh, laser over in our final location and got it all set up. Now the air assist pump plugs into the unit itself. Easy to connect the hose to it and very simple. There's a dial on the side as well to control the actual airflow of the unit. Took the laser head out of the box and package and installed it and you just simply run the cables to their location and the air assist to the laser head itself. You want to make sure the cables are run nice and neat and they're not uh, bundled up or twisted and going to impede movement of the laser head itself. And then finally, we put down the aluminum sheet or stainless sheet along with the honeycomb. Uh, we're going to run some tests on the machine and I've downloaded Lightburn, which uh, ultimately is not a free program. You have to pay for it, but I'm on a 30 day free trial. So I have zero experience with this stuff. A lot like a 3D printer uh, that we did recently. This is completely new to me, have zero experience with these programs, with any of this technology. So it's really making my brain work, but uh, it's ultimately, th this is a, seems like it's more complicated than the 3D printer software, but I'm sure we can meander through it. So I've gone to laser tools, test, and uh, I don't really know. I've, I've framed this out, so I hit the frame button and that frames out the printing area. So I think we just hit start and see what happens. There we go, it does some stuff. So we've got a couple things going on here. Number one, we've got our air purge system over there which is controlled on the side of the unit here. So you've got a manual control of more air, less air. 
And we've got all the different feedback sensors and everything going on there as well. So lots of great technology in this machine. So let's let it do its thing. Okay, so the point of the test piece here was simply to get the different uh, speeds and power settings of the laser itself. That's pretty cool stuff, man. It's pretty neat. So you can't really read the writing overly well, but we've got different speeds there and different powers. Now this is, uh, what is this? Two millimeter, three millimeter material. And it started to cut through it at looks like 70% right there. And of course, uh, the speed was the lowest speed right there. Okay, so that very first test was just whatever uh, numbers popped up on the, the computer here. So I've adjusted the numbers substantially. So previously it was 600 millimeters per minute uh, was the minimum. Now we're at 60 and it was like 18,000 millimeters a minute was the max and we've dropped it to a thousand. So let's see what happens here. And what you do with this is you hit the frame button. It frames out where it's going to print that on the material. Looks good. So let's start. So previously I couldn't read the writing. I'm hoping that maybe this time we can. Okay, so there's a setting for text settings. We've adjusted those to be a little bit more powerful and now it is absolutely doing its thing. So pretty cool stuff. So we've played with the settings a little bit more this time and you can see the difference here. Uh, we can see the writing a lot better and it's just going through the different speed functions. But the 22 watt laser, definitely powerful. Uh, no problem cutting through this plywood. It's going to be real interesting to see what kind of materials we can cut through here. And uh, this is kind of neat to have so we, we know speed in relation to power, how things are working out. Now this machine does up to 25,000 millimeters per minute. Now of course that would depend on the material you're trying to deal with. Sorry. And the air assist system is definitely groundbreaking. I mean this is uh, pretty cool to keep the nozzle and lens and laser completely clear of debris and smoke. And I love how it's all integrated into the unit. Very, very nice. I'm really impressed with the quality on this machine as well. I mean, from the time it came out of the box to this was really quick, all aluminum, very nicely made, really impressed. So because the frame comes all assembled, you guys saw it when it came out of the box, simply pull it out of the box, pop the laser head on and you're good to go. Now there is multiple safety precautions on this machine. So we've got triple monitoring, we've got airflow monitoring, lens monitoring and flame monitoring. So those three things are critical. And then we've also got an emergency stop button right there as well. And of course the lockout key. So if that key is locked out, machine can't be used. So here is our test piece and we'll pull this out right now. So this is at 400 millimeters per minute up to 9,000. I just made those numbers up and this just gave us an idea of what happens, right? So we're cutting through at 46.7% power all the way up to 100 at that speed. All right, so we're just playing around with the engraving option on the laser. So I've tossed my logo in here and uh, watched a bit of a tutorial on YouTube, of course. And we've got a piece of four by four stainless steel in there. And I know that we can develop some colors, but what I'm doing is just printing the logo on that and we're gonna see what the outcome is. All right, it's progressing nicely, pretty cool stuff. That's uh, really, really neat, especially being a newbie at this. Now, I know I've touched on the air assist already, but why that air assist is so important is without the air assist, you've got the smoke getting sucked up into the, the laser. Like there's fans in there right now, keeping everything cool. So you'd have that constant mess of smoke and stuff going into your laser. All right, and the stainless steel engraving just finished up and that looks really cool. That's uh, 
Pretty impressive. So apparently, I don't know how to do it yet, but apparently you can do different colors on stainless steel. So that'll be interesting to figure out, but this was just a grayscale pitcher and I think it turned out pretty dang cool. That's, uh, that's neat. Took about 20 minutes. And this was printed on the, uh, the bad side of the, uh, of the stainless, so it's kind of the rough side. This is the, uh, the finished side here. So let's do two more things in this video. Number one, we want to do some cutting through some thick material. So we're going to take some quarter inch plywood and cut a shape out of this. Now this thickness is something we would commonly use in the construction of the aircraft that we normally deal with on a regular basis. So with here at the lighter side of RC, we build aircraft and we very commonly use quarter inch or even half inch plywood in some cases. So let's uh, cut a couple shapes out of this and see how the, the machine handles it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a one inch square. So we've made our square there, 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters, and we've set our power to the manufacturer's recommendations. So that's done. And pretty simple, all we do is we go to the frame button right there. I know there's more technical ways to do that, but I'm not that technical at this point. So we click on the frame and it'll show you exactly where it's going to cut it out or print it or do whatever task that you're doing. Now you do have the option right there to select air or unselect air. So with that, now all we need to do is adjust our height of our laser itself. So pretty easy to use the handy tool. So we're using basswood four to six millimeters. Uh, we're kind of in between those two. We'll try this one first, the four to six millimeter one, the one that's in between. So we just loosen off the laser head, lift that up. Put it in between the material and the head, and that's it. So we've got that in the right position. Um, everything's set up and ready to go. Now, if we were in the middle of winter here, I would probably have the enclosure on, which is what's in that box, but we've got the shop door wide open and uh, there's gonna be no ventilation issues, but that hood is definitely a good thing to get if you're looking at purchasing one of these. All right, so let's start this and see what happens. It's only like 20 second job. It's really quick, I think. You can see lots of smoke generated. We'll make sure the air is turned up to max. So you definitely want to uh, have some sort of ventilation if you're doing this in, in an enclosed space inside your house, because that would probably set your fire alarm off. Done. Let's see if it cut through. Yeah, no problem and probably too powerful actually. But that is beautiful. Wow. That's awesome. Huh. Cool. Perfectly square. <laughs> yeah, per perfectly square. That is really neat. You couldn't do that by saw. <laughs> so generally what I've been doing in the past is using saws to do this kind of stuff because we use this exact thing here very often. I use these little wood screws to, to do mounts and everything in different aircraft. This is like game changer. That is beautiful. Like this would be a typical square that we've cut out that we're using as backing somewhere. Obviously very different results. Okay, so last thing we'll do here is we're just gonna clean the printer head and just take it apart. I just wanna show you guys how easy that is. It's uh, surprisingly simple. So let's, uh, let's do that. First thing we've done is we've turned the machine off and then we will pull the, the head off the machine. So in the kit, there's a little cleaning cloth, a little pair of tweezers, and there's also a spare uh, lens as well, but uh, we're not replacing the lens. We're just simply taking this one apart to take a look at it. Okay, so super easy access. We just pull the, uh, the tip. I, I don't know what this would be called, but you can see here the dust has been coming through the nozzle. 
Okay, we've taken the nozzle off here and then we, to access the lens, it's right underneath this brass collar. Now you don't want to touch the lens with your fingers. That's kind of a key thing. And if you ever have to replace the lens, they do include a new one in the box of parts. So there's our lens right there. I'm not going to, uh, to touch that. I know it looks like I am touching it, but I'm not. So there's a little, uh, there's a lens, then there's a rubber O-ring and then the brass piece. So easy access, easy to change, easy to clean and maintain. And right now I'm just using my fingernail on there and it's perfect. And then if we needed to from the outside here, we could just clean that lens off and she's good. And then pop our cap back on. This cap's also uh, made of aluminum, it's not plastic. There we go, so that's maintaining the lens itself. Very, very simple. Okay guys, and uh, there's the hood assembled. Ultimately, really simple to put together. You just put the fiberglass rods and stuff together and everything Velcros together. It's nice and solid. There's actually a built-in fan back there as well, and there's ducting that comes with it, so great unit. Uh, that's gonna be uh, a nice addition for, uh, for having this here in the shop. And if anything, it's just nice to have that on there so it doesn't get covered in dust. All right, guys, there are some links down below in the video description linking to this product and also the first comment in the video. And that's the overview of the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt laser engraver and cutter machine. This thing has got a great addition to the shop. Really looking forward to playing around with this and doing some fun projects with this unit. Uh, it's already demonstrated some pretty cool techniques that we're able to use, and I'm really excited about having this. So thank you to Creality for sending this through into the shop to be able to use and try out. Uh, we will do another video on this once we have some time to play around with it and uh, see what kind of uh, cool things we can do with it that relate to what we do here at the lighter side of RC. That's everything guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see ya in the next video.